from guard duty on the Chimera and the Death Star, to single-handedly taking out Corvettes. What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about a Stormtrooper variant that everyone has seen, but most don't know how it evolved into an absolute unit. Their history starts back in the Clone Wars, branches off into this heavy assault mech variant, and was used by Thrawn and Tarkin to defend key assets. The Republic's Galactic Marines were the first to experiment with a clone armor with a built-in jetpack and breathing device, perfect for launching attacks from space, kinda like we see in some of the episodes of the Clone Wars. Commander Bakara was one of these Galactic Marines that used these prototype suits during the Battle of New Brunel, and this early iteration was much closer to the Zero-G Assault Trooper than what we would see with the standard Imperial Space Trooper, because depictions of this battle have the Marines encountering super battle droids in zero gravity. The droids were likely magnetized into place, and since we don't have any accounts of B-2s walking around on the outside of CIS capital ships, perhaps the location that they were assaulting was some sort of space station. As the marines engaged the enemy, their built-in weapon systems failed, forcing them to rush the B-2s and fight them in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Luckily, the mech suits that they were wearing provided enough power to rip these droids apart, limb by limb. So they quickly went from watching out for those wrist rockets, to watching whole droid arms harmlessly float away into space. News of what happened spread throughout the Republic Armed Forces, and although the weapons failing was a bad look for the prototype, it sure helped to solidify a ferocious reputation for the Galactic Marine Corps. The Empire would recognize the need for space troopers, but this would just be a simple adaptation to the Stormtrooper armor, attaching a jetpack and rebreather combo device while also outfitting them with a T-21 Heavy Blaster, along with their standard E-11 and Thermal Detonator. The Heavy Blaster would be able to punch a hole in smaller boarding craft that might be trying to set down on an Imperial ship. And since the Space Troopers were always at least in pairs, this could be pretty effective. A rude welcome when a barrage of blaster fire comes from some part of the ship that you didn't think had any defenses. If the Space Trooper was on offense, this Thermal Detonator could act like a breaching charge opening up the hole enough to drop in or even smash through the transparent steel of a cockpit or bridge. It was on this defensive role that we would see them on the Death Star, but we also learn how Thrawn used them to defend his flagship the Chimera. Always thorough, the Chiss Grand Admiral had a protocol before he would tractor beam ships into the bay of his ISD. He would of course start with a battery of scans, but then he would send out teams of space troopers to survey the hole for any traps or potential threats. Having organic eyes and droid systems going over the same areas provided redundancies, making it less likely that both would miss something. And those organic eyes can't be hacked. Then he would send a survey team to enter and clean the inside of the ship before it was deemed safe enough to tractor aboard. With the Death Star, it just seems more like they have constant guard duty, but again, because these troopers' eyes can't be hacked. It's also a nice way to keep everyone busy. But they would go back to their Clone Wars mech power suit roots thanks to Rom Mach. This isn't confirmed, but lore states that he was an officer in the Clone Wars, who had a reputation for destroying droids in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Perhaps he was also there during the debut of that prototype model over New Brunel, because his entire life was devoted to just two things, the military and cybernetics. For this, Palpatine put him at the head of the Dark Trooper project, but he also helped to create the Zero-G Assault Trooper. Here's a quote about them from the Imperial Handbook. Widely considered the best soldiers in the galaxy, Imperial Space Troopers specialize in assaulting and capturing enemy starships. Like the Imperial Marines, they serve aboard the vessels of the Imperial Navy. Unlike the Marines, Space Troopers operate best in the airless interstellar void. Other sources state that their deadly abilities are second only to the Royal Guard. Two meters tall in this blaster-resistant mech suit, they would stand about as tall as a Wookiee. And this whole thing actually went over your standard Stormtrooper armor. It was built to be fast, powerful, and incredibly agile. It would take a while to be perfected, and are mostly seen with the Imperial Remnant, as the project wasn't even started until after the destruction of the first Death Star. With the Legends Thrawn, these two protected his flagship the Chimera, and were so effective that Leia Organa Solo remarked that these were more like single-pilot spacecraft. Their weaponry included shoulder-mounted grenade launchers that could fire concussion grenades for pure destruction, or gas and stun grenades for capturing New Republic leaders. Both wrists contain laser cutters for carving their way into a ship's hull, along with a blaster cannon on the right arm for personnel, and a miniature proton torpedo for incoming ships. With all that, you can see why Leia said, quote, A single space trooper was more than capable of breaching and seizing control of a blockade runner. And I'm sure Thrawn thought a single, power-armored trooper taking out a CR-90 was a much better return on your credits than a Death Star. Both the NR and Imperial Remnant forces referred to them as the best troops in the galaxy, as being able to wield all of these abilities correctly took an incredible amount of training. 
and they could be quickly transported across the galaxy and dropped off in a hit-and-run style via these hyperspace pods or from a Gamma-class assault ship, which could deliver 40 space troopers at a time. Their only real problem was that they could be disabled by EMP bursts. But this is true of all starfighters as well, and perhaps the suit could turn itself on after a while. But of course, when disabled, they were extremely vulnerable. Crick's mating advised Rebels and later NR forces to always have EMP countermeasures ready when transporting high-value assets. And it was Wedge Antilles that noticed that although they were quick and nimble for a person in a mech suit, they still didn't compare to an actual starfighter. These space troopers would try to avoid dogfights and head straight for the target ship. But any reasonably trained pilot should be able to make quick work of them if you could get to them before they breached the target hull. Their most notable use was during the Battle of Sluis Van in 9 ABY. This is a major NR shipyard, and the space troopers planned on capturing several capital ships to strengthen the Imperial Remnant. A quick response led to all of them being shot down, but the final two were able to self-destruct, resulting in some major hull damage to a corvette. So that's it for the history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind-the-scenes stuff. Bakara's Clone Wars era backstory with these early prototypes was from the old StarWars.com page and can now only be accessed via a backup link. And this big mech version came from the game Super Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, and they also appeared in the Heir to the Empire book and comic adaptation. For those normal ones on the Death Star, Joe Johnston actually played both of these guys. This was actually shot split-screen because one of the suits was stolen. I tried looking up if this was ever recovered, but couldn't find anything. So if you know this suit's whereabouts, do the right thing. Reach out to contact at metanerds.com, send it on over, and you can remain anonymous. And yes, despite it being a priceless collectible, I will be wearing it. Often. And in 2015, they came out with a really cool model of these guys, which finally confirmed the heavy blaster that they had. But that's it for the Space Trooper. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways that you can help support this channel for free, or check out our Patreon and see all the exclusive stuff, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, if we all meditate on the Force, we can convince them to make a Rainbow Six Siege style game with Space Troopers, and the Force will be with you, always.